Hello, and welcome to the Let's Talk Quilly podcast. I'm your host, Lydia Landrum. Thank you so much for being here. Here at Let's Talk Holy, we talk about all kinds of Christian things. Sometimes we talk about worldly things and how they evolve around Christianity and um, the things the Bible might say about it. But today we're going to talk about modesty. This is something that's been on my heart for a while. It's something the Lord has been teaching me ever since probably since I got saved, but I did not heed his warning or be obedient to him until really this year, if I'm being honest. Um, but I did change a lot of my lifestyle, um, last year when I really felt convicted and we're going to talk about all of that. Let's start though with the definition of modesty. And I also want to say something really quickly. I have a blog on um, let's talk holy blog dot Wix site. I want to say I can link it down below in the description or in the comments somewhere, depending on how you're listening, where you're listening. Um, anyway, you can find these on YouTube, by the way, if you want to watch, it, it's not a video of me, but it is a type of video, I guess. Anyways, what I was saying. If you um, go to my blog, I have all of my podcasts from last, uh, like my last episode from two weeks ago up to this one today, and then I'll have another one. I have those all typed out. If you want to um, read instead of listen, you can do a quick read. A lot of them um, say how long they are to read, about six to nine minutes, depending on, you know, how I was feeling that day. I really like to talk. So depending on how wordy it is, but if you're interested in that, that will be linked down below. So a lot of what I'm saying is going to parallel to those um, blog posts. I'm not like saying them word for word, but it is my, I guess, like my basis on what I'm saying. That way I don't lose track because I do that a lot. <laughs> I'll start doing a podcast and I didn't write anything down. I just will start talking and I'll start talking about something completely different than what I initially wanted to talk about and, or I forget, or, you know, there's other things that I don't know what else to say. Anyway, we're going to get into modesty now, but what's the definition of modesty? There's, um, a few different ones and I just have one, two, three, four, five here that I got off of the internet. Um, there's a lot more to modesty, I guess I, which I didn't know until I started researching my initial reason for doing this episode was to talk about dress. But then I realized that there's a lot to it other than just dressing. It's a whole lifestyle. So one definition says dressing or behaving so as to avoid impropriety or indecency, especially to avoid attracting sexual attention. I think most of us know that one. And um, also I'll say something about that. There's a lot of people especially that aren't Christians, but some that are Christians, maybe more, you know, some that don't take holiness seriously or, you know, more of a progressive Christian that will say, you know, I can dress however I want and modesty is within the heart. And just because I'm wearing something certain doesn't mean I'm wanting sexual attention. But the actual definition does say that it has to do with sexual attention or impropriety or indecency. So if you're dressing modestly, you're going to dress in a way that it doesn't attract that attention. If you're dressing immodestly, it's going to attract that attention, whether you want it or not. It's like men or women, by the way, I'm not just talking to women here. I'm, I'm doing, I'm talking about both. It's going to attract that sexual attention, that attention that most of us don't want. But to you know, a lot of us do have, if we're being honest with ourselves, and we will talk more about that later. The second definition I have here is having a limited or not overly high opinion, opinion of yourself and one's abilities. So having a modest thought or opinion of yourself, you don't think too highly of yourself, which is biblical. The Bible says to put other people above you and you're not to think that you're all that or that, you know, you're something special, you know, in, t in like worldly terms. I mean, so to not think highly of yourself. Another definition is um, modesty is not boastful or vain. 
Another one says not excessively large, expensive, or extravagant, and then limited or small. So clearly modesty represents more than, you know, just what we wear. It shows us where our heart is at and it exposes why we are doing a particular thing. And I hear a lot of Christians, including myself, say that modesty is, you know, up to each individual, like I talked about earlier, and that it differs from person to person. And I still kind of believe that to, you know, to a degree. But I also think it'd be very lacking of us to ignore the fact that in some ways there are stark differences between what is and what is not modest. Clothing, for example, is pretty self-explanatory for most people. Wearing clothing that accentuates your assets, it hugs every curve of your body, or it shows parts of your body that God made for you and your husband or you and your wife is obviously immodest. And when it comes to both genders, male and female, there is an area in my life in particular that the Lord has dealt with me recently on. I used to wear a lot of short shorts and crop tops and leggings um, as just regular pants. And I still wear leggings. <laughs> Obviously, if you know me, you know that I wear leggings. Um, so, but I have changed the way that I wear leggings. So I'll talk about that. But I used to go braless at the store. I used to wear low cut tops, super short dresses. And I really did not care who saw me. And in my mind, I would say, or on social media, or, you know, to people, I would say, I'm comfortable, I look cute, I'm confident in my body, I'm plus size, and I'm confident, and this is rare, and this is awesome, and, you know, society really, really, really praises that. Um, I would get a lot of questions like, how can you wear that and be so confident and so comfortable? And, um, you know, what they were referring to is my weight. How can I be that comfortable showing off that much of my body with the weight that I carry? And my answer was always, I don't know. I just feel confident and, you know, it's my body and I really don't care what anyone thinks about it. And I can look and dress however I want. It's my body blah, blah, blah. I would say all that junk. And you know, my, that that's what my head, like that's where my heart was at. That's, that's what I was feeling and what I was thinking. And it really led me down a road of like destruction. And, you know, we can talk about that too, but, and that's just, you know, the innocent belief that I had. And it started out small, but like I said, years down the road ended up turning into an entire lifestyle problem. I noticed that the clothes I was wearing started to turn heads, started to make people say things sexual to me. And I started like thoroughly enjoying the attention. And this led me to start dressing for sexual attention. Like obviously I was already dressing that way, but I, my mind started realizing, oh, this is like, I'm gaining sexual attention. Okay. So this is what I want and this is what I'm doing it for. And I liked it. It wasn't because I felt cute or comfy or confident. It was because I wanted attention. That was the root of my, of my, um, of my immodesty was attention seeking because how you feel on the inside, it will reflect on the outside. And yes, even when it comes to clothes, especially when it comes to clothes, and I'm going to say something a little harsh and a little hard to hear, but it is the truth. We all can sit here and say that it's a man's fault if he cannot keep his eyes off of a woman. And to a point that is true, but by nature, all of us are sinful humans who need boundaries. We have to have them. And this is why the Bible tells us to live a certain way, to talk a certain way, and to dress a certain way. If we are honest and take a step back and look at the ways that we dress or the way that we just live our life, again, both men and women, the way we adorn ourselves and look at the root of what is causing us to look a certain way, it's usually pride, vanity, sexual desire, or even complete rebellion against God. No, I'm not saying shorts, jeans, leggings, and crop tops are sinful to wear, but what I am trying to get you to focus on and realize is that our flesh is corrupt. We are inherently sinful. If we do not pay attention and put some thought into our actions from day to day, they can lead us to destruction. And this is one way that Satan gets you. He feeds you these tiny little bit by bit lies that make you believe 
you know, he makes you believe each and every single little bitty lie until one day it turns into a huge problem. And then you, you know, you wonder where it all started from. My immodesty got so bad that I was coming to work dressing this way and I was getting lots of attention where I didn't need to get attention. And it got so bad that, you know, at first I could wear whatever I wanted. And then all of a sudden I was being told I need to dress more modestly. And that, oh, that made me mad. That made me so angry. When anybody would point out to me that my clothes were not appropriate, it would make me so mad. And it makes people mad. If you even point out like, hey, your shorts are really short and your butt cheeks are showing. Okay. So why are you looking? You know, people get so defensive that that was my heart too. I'm not saying that I never did that, but that, you know, dressing that way and making that my lifestyle of wanting to look, you know, have, you have attention. It didn't just reside in my clothing. It also was, I was, I was unhappy with the car that I drove. I was unhappy with the house that I, you know, lived in. I was unhappy with the clothes my husband was wearing because none of those things, like I wanted attention in all areas. And the root of that problem was that my husband and I were not together on the same page. We were both sitting behind closed doors. He was doing his thing. And I've talked about this in my testimony. If you want to go watch that, I can link that down below. But he was doing his thing. He was participating in his own sin. I was participating in my own sin apart from each other. And he wasn't giving me the attention that I desired in our marriage and that I needed. And I wasn't giving him the attention that he desired and he needed. We were both very selfish and we both wanted what we wanted. And, um, the more that that happened, the worse that my attention seeking got to the point of wanting to cheat on my husband. And all of that, I'm telling you, all of that started as innocent little bitty lies from Satan telling me that what I was doing was okay and that it's not that big of a deal. You don't have to take it that serious. Um, you can wear that, you know, your shirt's a little too low or the crop top is a little too high, but you know, it's fine. Who cares? Why do people care so much what other people wearing? But as a Christian, you guys, and I, and I'm mostly talking to the Christians. I understand maybe someone might hear this. That is not a Christian that's not saved. And that's great. I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm praying for you, but that that heart is rebellion against God and his word. And we're going to get into what his word says when it comes about living modestly. But I want to tell you today that if you're feeling convicted about your lifestyle, your clothes in the modesty area, instead of getting upset at the people that dress modestly and that take it serious, you need to stand back and look at yourself and see if what you're doing is rebellious towards God. Are you rebelling against him? If he's calling you out of the way that you are living, are you obeying him? Are you listening to his call, the Holy Spirit telling you what you're doing is wrong? I need you to listen to me. Are you ignoring him or are you um, taking it serious? Because a lot of people will say Christianity is not that serious. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I have liberties. I can dress how I want. But our liberties, you guys, still have boundaries. We still have boundaries that we have to take in consideration, especially if the Bible tells us explicitly and it does. The, the Bible is explicit about modesty and dressing modestly. Let's go to God's word and see what he says. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. In like manner also that woman adorned themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh woman professing godliness with good works. In these two verses, Paul is instructing Timothy on how women should adorn themselves in the church or in a public worship setting. Clearly, women are to have on modest apparel, which we now know since reading the definition of what these words mean, that we women are to dress a certain way in a church setting. 
Notice that the Bible does not tell us to not try and look our best or tell us to not attempt to have a good appearance, but rather that that good appearance that we are trying to have, that it glorifies and honors God. And we don't want to be a distraction to what is happening during public worship. We don't want to be the center of attention, making people stare and focus on us because of the way we look or dress. And we certainly don't want to be a stumbling block to a brother in Christ or to make another sister jealous. Our hearts behind what we do and why we do it needs to point others to Jesus and shine his light, not our own. And when we dress the way I did in the past, it was for vain glory. It was to esteem myself highly and put others down. It was to look hot and make men think I looked good when really none of that mattered. My my identity was rooted in my looks and what other people thought of me not my Lord. My Lord wasn't Jesus. In fact, it was myself. And sometimes it was other people. My fashion advice didn't come from the Bible. It came from trends or whatever was comfortable because I didn't know any better when I wasn't saved. I thought dressing modestly was something the Amish did and that we have freedom and liberty in Christ when I got saved to do what we want and to look how we want to. But that was my mindset until I read the verses about modesty and how God calls us to look and to act. I started getting convicted about what I was wearing and the reason why was brought to my attention and I got uncomfortable. Of course, everyone gets uncomfortable when they get told what you're doing is not okay. The Bible tells us that we are not our own. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, Paul says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? If we're not our own, but we belong to God, then he gets to dictate what we do with our lives, how we eat, how we dress, how we talk everything. And the longer that you walk with the Lord, the more he will reveal to you over time and sanctification takes process by the Holy Spirit. Right now, the sanctification I'm going through is modesty, being a doer of the word, not just a reader. And I think modesty is so beautiful. It's important and it's needed in today's society. The divine feminine is running rampant everywhere. And when I realized I was taking part in that by the way I was acting and dressing, it deeply grieved me. God made women beautiful, smart, attractive, and that is a very good thing. But the devil has so many women believing the lie that they need to dress sexually or extravagantly to get any attention or to get love. God has shown me in my own life that desiring to turn heads, ensuring your butt and boobs look good in your outfit, or walking and talking in such a way to bring attention to yourself is very seductive and very Jezebel-like. Do we want to be like Christ? Do we want to live a godly, Holy Spirit-led life? Or do we want to look like the world and act like the world, which is run by the little G God, otherwise known as Satan? I, at this point, want my entire lifestyle to be as anti this world as possible. I see the deception. I see the sin, the craftiness of the devil, the shallow mindedness and the vanity in this world. All of it saddens me and it strengthens my desire to live, talk, and dress like Christ wants me to. I dress the way I do now because I want to honor God. I want to obey his commands and I want to follow his leadership. I don't dress this way to be saved, to avoid hell. I don't do this to say I'm a better Christian than you because I dress more modestly than you. My eyes are fixed solely on Jesus in pointing people to him. That is my heart. I want every aspect of my life to reflect Jesus and and the light that he has put inside of me. I want his Holy Spirit to show through me. I want people to look at me and say something is different about her. And that answer would be that it's Jesus. Every day, you guys, you're going to encounter someone, possibly even someone you've never even met. Do you want them to see you or do you want them to see Jesus? The world looks a certain way, you guys, and we should not desire to look the way the world looks. And that is hard to understand that. I know it's hot outside. I know we want the shorts to be so short and the dresses to be so short and, you know, the shirts to be short or whatever. I understand all of that. And that's a very valid reason to dress immodestly. But we have to remember what Christ calls us to do and how he calls us to be. And 
I know that not everyone's going to agree with me and that's fine. We all have our opinions and our beliefs. And when we read the Bible, some of us are going to think differently than others. And I get that, but I think we need to study and we need to show ourselves approved. And that's what the Bible tells us to do. And you know, when I started going to my church, a lot of the women there, not all of them, and this is not norm, like it's not a hundred percent of the time that they do this, but when they come to church in a church setting, like I was saying, in a public worship church setting, they wear dresses or skirts or some type of pants or shorts or something that is modest. Yes, I said shorts. Shorts can be modest. I'm not telling you that any of that stuff is sinful or that it's not modest. It, you have to you know, you have to use discernment and you have to wear things in a certain way. And, um, anything can be modest as long as it's not hugging every asset. You know what I'm saying? Don't take this as legalism or that I'm speaking, um, legalistically or, uh, critically at all. Um, but when I started going, thank you. When I started going to my church, I noticed that a lot of the women there during church wear more, mostly dresses or skirts, or like I said, pants or shorts that are modest. And I started getting angry and I didn't want to go to that church because I thought, oh, they're legalistic. They believe in modesty. They take that very serious. It's almost Amish like blah, blah, blah. And it's not, it's, re it's really not now that I have that mindset and I have talked to those women. That's what I've done. I took my, my, I took my anger, my frustration and my confusion instead of, you know, I, I did that for a little while and I held that in. But after I got to know these women and I got to know their hearts, dude, after I got to know these women and I got to know their hearts, I went to them and I said, look, I noticed that you dress this way at church, but at your house, you wear, you know, whatever you want. Well, it's still modest, you know, but you, you don't dress this way at church. You know, why, what is, what's the deal, you know? And every single one of them told me what I'm telling you, my heart is I want to glorify God. This is what the scriptures say. And I take it serious. That's what I do. You do you, but this is what God calls us to do. And instead of telling me why they were better than me, because they're not, but they, instead of telling me that they pointed me to Christ and that's how it should be. We should be pointing each other to Christ, to the Lord, instead of getting angry and upset, thinking, oh man, that person's a better Christian than me. Who do they think they are? Blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, whatever. Our eyes should just be fixed on Jesus. And my point in dressing the way that I do also is not to anger people. It's not to make people think that I'm better than them or that I look better than them or that I'm a better Christian or that I'm closer to the Lord. Because someone can dress however they want. They can dress as modest as all get out and not even believe in the right God. You can be a Muslim and cover yourself from head to toe and believe in a God that's not even real and take it that serious, but you don't even know God. You can dress inappropriately, immodestly and read and believe. You read about Jesus and believe with your whole heart that he's real and know the one true God and you can dress that way and you could be closer to him than I am. But you know, if you're going to love, Jesus said this, if you're going to love him, you're going to obey his command. So I just want to encourage you today to spend some time in the secret place with the Lord. Psalms 91 1 tells us that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Please seek him on these things. Read the scriptures in context and read them again. Let God speak to you through his word and let it rest in your spirit. And I pray that you would get saved today if you haven't already by believing in Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, acknowledging him as the one true God of eternity and the only way to eternal life. I pray that you would grow deeper in the Lord and allow him to sanctify you being completely submitted and surrendered to him. I hope you guys didn't take this the wrong way. My heart was not to put anybody down. It was just to show you in the scriptures where God talks about modest modesty and, you know, the fact that, you know, our attention doesn't come from flashiness or, um, braided hair or gold or jewelry. It comes from inside. God calls women to be gentle, meek, you know, women. And I would love to do an episode on that, um, because I need a refresher myself, but, 
we're called not to be foolish. There's a lot of things, okay, that the Bible says about women and how we are to be. And modest is one of them that comes, you know, women and then both. But obviously, if we're being honest with ourselves, women are more apt to be the more immodest one. Anyway, I hope you guys um, heard my heart in this episode and me pushing you towards Jesus and being more like Christ and following his plan of how we are to live from day to day. Um, I am not perfect. I wish I see women on Instagram wearing dresses and skirts in their home and they look beautiful and they look awesome. And it's just so romantic. and so there's just something about it that I'm just drawn to. And I want to be that person. And I love that. Um, and some of it is like the money. I tried to buy a new modest outfit or clothing piece every time I can, um, which is usually every month or so, just so I can have things. And not only is it modest to like wear dresses and skirts 90% of the time, but it's also so refreshing to see that in public. It is, and I can get my husband on here to verify that it is refreshing to see women that look like they take their holiness seriously. Please hang on. I'm almost done. They look like they take their holiness seriously. They they look like they have a relationship with Christ and they're concealing their most precious items that they own. They're concealing them for their husband, for their, their love, the, for the person that God put them with. And that is so beautiful. And um, instead of looking, you know, cheap and easy, they look expensive and they look like they were bought with a price. And I want to be that woman. I want to point people to Jesus. I want them to look at me and say, what religion are you? What, why do you dress that way? Because that's not normal. That's what I want. I want and then you could share the gospel with somebody. Oh my word. It's just, just a lot, whole lifestyle. Modesty is just a whole lifestyle. I'm happy with my house. I'm happy with this little tiny two bedroom, one bathroom home. And I don't need the big giant house anymore. And the expensive car, I am so content and happy with what I have. And that is part of modesty as well. I hope this was an encouragement to you guys and pushed you more towards Jesus. And I pray that you have an amazing week.